Hey, how you doing guys? Lewis here with Fidebo. And today we're gonna to run through some basics, I would consider them basics, ideas to get started with a unique, clean and elegant logo inside of After Effects. All right guys, so I've created a new project with a composition that lasts for 15 seconds. And the very first thing we're gonna do is go to our shape tool and create a shape. Now this can be any shape of your liking. And in fact, we don't even have to use the shapes found within After Effects. You can bring in a PNG or whatever it may be. To keep things ultra simple, I'm just gonna go with a circle. So you drag to create the shape. And if you hold shift while you drag, the shape is created with equal, equal proportions, I should say. Let's bring that into the center. And let's change the colors here. So, uh, okay, that'll do. We're gonna go to the stroke and turn that off. We're gonna call this background layer. Then we're gonna duplicate it. And then we're gonna do the opposite thing. We're gonna turn off the fill and we're gonna turn on the stroke. But we want the stroke to be visible. So we're gonna increase the scale to about 102. Okay, perhaps say 104. Just to give it a little bit of distance around the circle itself. For the time being, after I rename this to background stroke, I'm gonna turn it off. So now we're gonna take the letter of your brand, your company, uh, maybe your, even your gaming tag. So let's just call it uh, Zach's Gaming Channel, or Zach's Gaming Corporation, whatever it may be. I've got a really cool uh, Z font there from Showcard Gothic, I believe. Now I do want this Z to be anchored centrally. So I'm gonna use this Anchor Sniper script to place it in the center. If you don't have that, you can just press A on the letter to bring it up. I'm gonna duplicate the letter Z or Z, depending on where you are located. And then I'm going to pre-compose it and call this logo effects. And I'm gonna call this logo animated. Time being, let's turn that off. And with the background layer, let's change the mat to logo effects. And then click to invert the mat. And in fact, let's just rename logo effects to logo mat. There we go, that works a lot better. So this is our base point at the moment. Now let's add a little bit of animation to it. Now, when we talk about 3D rotation, it's easy to gravitate towards, you know, turning it to a 3D layer and then swapping about the rotation. If you're new to After Effects, you might not want to mess around with 3D layers just yet. Although we are going to use 3D layers in this tutorial, let me show you a different trick just for the sake of this tutorial. I think it's really good and it's really um, important to sort of get this concept down in order to manipulate perspective in your animations. So I've brought up the scale and in fact, you know what? Let me just take away that mat a moment. So I've brought up the scale and if I decrease this, you know, it increases the scale. If I take off this chain link, which is to constrain proportions, then decrease it, you can see it somewhat looks like it's rotating, right? And in fact, we can further this by, if I create another shape on top of this and just change the fill so it's noticeable, and then adjust the scale again. All it's done is inverted the scale, but we can also see it mimics the idea that it rotates. Now you can only go to 100 to minus 100, but if you don't fancy playing around with 3D layers, perhaps it's a little bit daunting, this is something that you can do to mimic a 2D rotating object. So for the time being, let's delete that, bring that up to 100, and then we're gonna go to scale zero, set a keyframe to one second, turn it back to 100. Okay, great. Now for the time being guys, we don't have to worry about the time of the animation. Kind of like writing a book where you just want to sort of get everything out and then go back into edit. We'll do 
the time a little later, but we will change the keyframe to an easy ease. So we're gonna turn on the logo mat. And what we're gonna do is copy the keyframes to that mat. So that rotates with uh, the background composition. Okay, so now let's look to animate the logo. Turn that on and what we're gonna do is we will be turning this to a 3D layer. In fact, I'm gonna just pre-compose this myself, logo animated comp, and let's do it within here. 3D layer, we're gonna choose the anchor target to the top. Now again, I'm using the anchor sniper script, but to do this without the script, because it is a paid script, you just simply press A to bring up the anchor point. And whatever, you know, at the bottom now, or we can bring it over to the side. But yeah, I do highly suggest using Anchor Sniper. It's uh, very sufficient to use. So all we're gonna do is go to rotation. I believe it is X rotation. Bring it up until it's out of view. Set a keyframe, bring it forward a second, bring it back down to zero. So I think what we could do is get a little bit more speed with that. Okay, and bring that out. Okay, so that falls down quite naturally. Again, this is something that I'm gonna go into and properly address later. Okay, so what I want now is for this Z to sort of like come down and just sort of shake a little bit as from, from the speed of the, uh, the drop down. So we're just gonna go a few steps out and go to say plus 20, go back to say minus 15, plus 11, minus four, plus three, into zero. As you can see, as we've progressed, it gets slower and slower. I think we might need to space these out a little bit just so it's not as chaotic. We are gonna have to adjust the speed of this drop down, um, but for the moment, again, we're just looking to sort of get the, the basics of the animation out there before we start going in and refining everything. Okay, so we're gonna come to the comp right now we obviously do not want that Z to appear while the logo is sort of coming into formation okay it's fine one thing though that we can see is it's sort of <laughs> that should be behind the uh, logo now there are two things we could do we could just easily drop it behind and now it looks pretty legit when it comes out it comes out in front of it but that's not what i want to do because we will be adding an effect onto this to give it a little bit of 3d life so all i'm going to do is the very simple procedure of grabbing the pen tool and simply creating a mask sometimes the easiest solutions is the most obvious answers instead of going through all the different track mats or trying to make an alpha layer and stuff just mask it. And there we go. So now I'm going to duplicate the logo layer. And for the bottom one, I'm gonna to go to fill. And let me just turn off that top layer a minute so we can see what we're doing. Turn off that. It does look like I've mucked up the mask a little bit by here, I think. I'm gonna change the color to black. Okay, I'm gonna to go to CC radial fast blur, bring that in and adjust the center so the shadow is pointing downward. As to the amount, let's say give it around about 47. Then we're gonna turn on the motion blur for both of these. One thing I am gonna do with both these layers is turn the opacity to zero, just on the initial seconds. And then when it comes down, Bring it up to 100. Just so it sort of gives the appearance that behind there it is a lot darker. We kind of only uh, see it come into play a little, a little later. And then what I do need to do is change this top, the bottom layer, sorry, to shadow. Now the shadow should just come into play a little bit more when it settles outside of the zone. There we go. So as it's starting to do its shake, we've got the shadow appearing, which looks very nice. Wow. Okay, cool. 
Is this where we're at at the moment? Again, don't worry about the timing. Okay, with that done, now what we're gonna do is go back down to our background stroke and put in, okay, we're gonna go to radial wipe, bring that onto the stroke, press transition complete, and change this to counterclockwise. I kind of want this to work as this has just come in. Okay. Well, that's doing that. I'm gonna bring this down to zero. And then duplicate radial wipe. So we've got a secondary layer on it. And as it starts catching up to itself, what we want to happen is it's gonna start chasing its tail, okay? So we're gonna to go to where it's about say 5 p.m. or five o'clock on the, the clock. We're gonna set the transition completion stopwatch, uh, key watch on. And the moment it reaches 11 p.m., I'm gonna kickstart this around until it reaches there. And then we can go to 100%. Okay, so. I have gone back into the animation and adjusted the speed properties of those keyframes. As I said, just you know, just try and find what you want to do first and then go back in to refine it. And this is where we're at now with the logo. So pretty sleek, pretty smooth. I really like how that looks. Now the next part is the arcade screen to give it that sort of retro-y vibe. Now we don't want to do what I see a lot is like a VHS overlay. We're not going to do that because it's not what arcade screens look like. Um, but right, to get started, let's create a new adjustment layer, which is also control or Y. And as I need to create two, I'll do that there. We're going to add quite a variety of different effects. So first of all, I'm going to add wave warp to the top adjustment layer. We will be moving these adjustment layers about, I tell you what, let me just rename this primary effects. And then for the time being, let's just put that there. Okay. So the goal here is to create a old school kind of arcade CRT screen. Again, we're not just gonna add a VHS overlay. So the, if I turn this off a moment. So let's have a look at just about where this, the animation ends. Around about here. Remember what I said, you wanna sort of conjoin the animations onto each other. Okay, so we're gonna be starting from here with these effects. And in fact, what I'm gonna do here is make an opacity keyframe a moment and bring that up there. So we're gonna officially start the arcade effects from here. Okay, turn this back on. Okay, so we're gonna change this to smooth noise and with wave height and wave, wave width, set a keyframe. And basically we're just going to we don't really want a logo to last more than four or five seconds, I think for a gaming channel. So realistically, um, we're gonna end the keyframe up here. So let me just go to you. Now the goal within this is to really sort of change the look, the parameters. So I'm just gonna start it on wave height 14, width say 560. I don't really want this to be moving as such. Okay, now, Let's go back to where we set those end keyframes for our end point. And we're just going to sort of slightly say 590. You can see it's, it's not like too much. And also, I don't know if you can already see it, but it certainly has that kind of old school tally jello effect or arcade machine. But uh, that is just one of many effects. So let's add the next one. And we're going to go to box blur. Add this one. And again with this, go back to your primary keyframe, change box blur to say three, very minimal. And we're gonna go halfway with this one and change it down to say 1.5 and then go back up to 
3.2. Just so there's a, a bit of variation throughout the movement of it. Back to the initial keyframe. The next effect we're gonna add to this adjustment layer is noise. I'm gonna bump this up to say 13%. Let's say 25. Set a keyframe. Again, go to the middle. A slight adjustment, say 22.6. That was a really random number and then go to 26. Okay, back to the initial keyframe. Just press U so I can get all those back up. And the next one is the Phoenician blinds. Now this is a transition, don't worry about that. Go back to the initial keyframes. Now for this one, we do need the direction. We just put the transition complete there. We need to transition across because it is sort of going to be like those um, CRT lines. So that needs to be 90. Yeah, I think two is okay. Go to here and then say 2.8. And go back down to the end point. And transition to be two. Okay, that's looking good. And then finally, we're just going to add a glow. And we're going to bring the threshold up to 100. So it's very minimal. And bring that glow radius down to say six. <clears throat> I'm gonna create a new solid. Bring that down just underneath. Maybe the passy at four, just to give it that sort of blue element of, uh, we can just about make out the screen in the background. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Right, next what we're going to do is create a new camera. Okay. And I'm going to bring in this overlay that I picked up from FreePick. And it's the screen. And what I'm going to do to this, because I do not like the look so far. Layer new solid, turn this black. Okay, Just do a little bit of on the fly color grading, I think, guys. Subtract. Give that a little bit of a vignette and a lumetry color. And this isn't part of the logo itself, but I just want to sort of adjust the balance of that screen. Okay, so now this is where the screen is going to be. In fact, this is way too big. Um, but I'm just dealing with where I want that. I'm pairing that black solid to the screen. Now, I'm also gonna type, press start, and I'm gonna position this underneath wave warp, and then go to primary effects, copy wave warp, and then adjust that to the wave warp adjustment layer. You'll see why I do that in a moment. Okay, we're gonna make the black solid a 3D layer, the screen a 3D layer, press start a 3D layer, and the primary logo, the 3D layer. Now with the camera, we're gonna get to its position and the goal is to zoom out, not too far, just up until the point where the logo is not as large in the screen. Then with the press start and screen, we're gonna bring this position out quite significantly. Okay, so this is gonna be the end point of the logo. So kind of go to the primary effects and when they kick in, I just want the end point to be right about by there, I guess. So we're gonna to go to the camera, set a keyframe for its end position, go back and we're just gonna zoom back into our starting position for the logo. Nice. I might be somewhat employed to bring that camera to be a lot quicker. Let's just have a look at what this looks like now. Shut this off. Yeah, so we need to add one thing is add motion blur to all of this. And secondly, change that to an easy ease frame. Easy ease. Change that to an easy ease frame. And when you go into the speed graph, what you can do is with these pulleys, is if we pull that like such, in that shape, 
what we should see is, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna turn off this overlay because it's slowing down my render preview. I wanna see the speed of this. So we should get like a very sharp pull out and then a nice slow down at the end. Okay, that's fine, but it needs to be closer together. Not a little too fast. Slight adjustment, let's have a look at this one. Cool, I would maybe even be more inclined just to zoom out a touch more just to see the screen. Okay, so the reason why we put the wave warp on a different um, adjustment layer is because we don't want it affecting the text too much. Um, it is somewhat too drastic when it's on the text, um, but having the primary effects on an additional adjustment layer, sandwiching the text in between is a great alternative. So we have one more thing to do to this composition to give it the final touch. Zach's gaming logo comes down. Nice zoom out into the arcade. And then you can have like your little jingle or so for like the final two seconds of this. You never really want a, um, a logo to last too long. Okay, so that's looking great. And the final thing we're gonna do is go back to the primary logo composition. Go to composition settings, change the frame rate from whatever it is to 15 or 12. If we go back into comp two gives it a little bit of that animated stutter that we might, might be familiar with from Into the Spider first. It works well for this kind of uh, element. And there is one more thing that we could do. So there is one more thing that we can do, although it is very dependent on kind of how you feel about these things. Uh, but we're gonna go to primary effects and duplicate that layer, bring it underneath everything but your primary logo, uh, get the opacity, make sure Everything's in tune. Delete all of these. We're only using this adjustment layer. We're, we've only duplicated it really for the pasty keyframe. Type in CC pixel poly and drag that in. And we're gonna go to direction, randomness, and that's gonna be zero. The grid space in one, speed randomness, zero. Force, zero. And gravity, zero. We go forward actually so you can see what that effect looks like and then if we go to where the opacity is set for its final keyframe adjust that down to say 50 and it just gives it more of a, a pixelated texture on the screen if we turn this off it's a little bit noisier kind of adds to the vintageness of it but yep yeah, so this would be it um you don't have to follow the pixel poly thing, but it just adds a little bit of a uh, texture to the uh, to the logo. All right, guys, I've been Lewis with Fedivo. I hope you found this uh, informative. So, you know, as someone who grew up with Andrew Kramer tutorials and the likes on After Effects, a lot of the time I would never intend to kind of follow the tips, so to speak, uh, to do what they've done. But just knowing how they've achieved something would very much uh, help me in my journey. So yeah, there's that. Catch you guys next time.